Hello, I'm Dr. Alveda King, inviting you to listen to Melody Politics on the Edge. You'll learn something. Our next guest is Mr. Scott Walter. He is president at the Capital Research Center. He served in the George W. Bush administration as special assistant to the president for domestic policy and was vice president for publications and research at the Philanthropy Roundtable. There he edited Philanthropy Magazine and also produced donor guidebooks on public policy research, school choice, and assistance to the poor. You can learn more by visiting capitalresearch.org. That's capitalresearch.org. Scott, welcome to the program. How are you this evening, sir? Great. Honor to be here. Well, I wanted to chat with you about, uh, you guys have lots of great work. Um, one of the items that I want to talk to you about right now has to do with Zuckerberg and money in elections. So how, what, how was he involved in this last election? Uh, in a massive way that's not remotely been reported on enough, um, the way it worked is he gave hundreds of millions of dollars to one little nonprofit, legally speaking, a 501c3, which is, to say, a, a charity, right, something that by law is supposed to be nonpartisan, uh, not endorsing candidates or anything like that. He gave that one little charity $350 million. And which, um, which charity was this? It's called the Center for Tech and Civic Life. Uh, and you probably have not heard of it before. Their budget the year before was about a million dollars. So he gave them the hundreds of millions, and then they did something astounding. They re-granted that money out to thousands of government election offices, local government election offices, all over the country, over 2,000 of them. And the, the bottom line is they juiced the turnout uh, in Democratic areas and are probably the single most important factor in the whole election, arguably. And and when we what we did is we started looking at the numbers state by state about the difference that they made and where their money went, and uh, the the skew to the Democrats is astounding. So let me stop you for a moment. When you say government election offices, what do you mean? I mean, like the folks who actually, you know, the ones who set up the polling places, the ones, you know, whatever county you're in. Uh, I mean, some places so it's done by some state board, the county, but state yeah. board of election offices. Yes, yeah, except in the in the counties and sometimes in townships and things like that. Typically, most states it goes by county. And so those offices, which are supposed to be nonpartisan, <laughs> um, and ensure the the voting ability of all their citizens. Um, so those offices, what would they have used the money for? Well, uh, I testified to the Georgia Senate on all this, and the hospital legislator was like, this is just for PPE, right, personal protective equipment. And the answer is um, that that gets barely mentioned in the the forms you had to fill out to get the money if you were a local election official. There's a, there was a five-page form in Georgia, for instance. There was one line mentioning private protective equipment. You know, they don't care about the masks and plexiglass. They care about things like voter education materials and drop boxes and the, how there need to be a vast number of those drop boxes in the Democratic areas. Um, so that's the kind of thing that it got spent on. Okay. Um, and no, we haven't seen this reported on at all, but, I mean, they're basically it, – if American citizens haven't figured out that our, quote, unquote, news stations are just propaganda machines for the left, then I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's nope, sad. exactly. It's a sad state of affairs. It's a sad place that we are in at this point in this in this nation. Um Tell me, before we go forward, capital research, how long have y'all been around? We've been around about uh, roughly 35 years uh, studying the, our, that's our mission, to investigate the left deeply and expose it widely. Okay, and so you, um, 
do you have folks like yourself who, who regularly go on air to, to talk about these issues? Or how do, you get, how do you get the information out to the general public, I guess is what I'm asking. Sure. Well, we, we always love uh, all kinds of media hits. I mean, I've written about this sort of thing for the Wall Street Journal and other uh, papers. Uh, Tucker Carlson, after I, uh, I testified to the Georgia Senate, uh, Tucker Carlson was kind enough to have me on his show. He was horrified that one single tech billionaire was able to, you know, overhaul the way elections worked around the country. That's, I mean, if it had been a right-wing billionaire, you know, there wouldn't be no le- enough electrons in the universe to power New York Times.com's outrage. Because uh, you know, honestly, that's the way I think about this. Think about if it was like uh, Sheldon Nielsen, a big Republican donor who just died. Um, if he'd written a $350 million check to a supposedly nonpartisan nonprofit staffed by Carl Rove veterans, um, and they went out and juiced the vote, the, the outrage, I mean, there, there would be riots in the street from that, sadly. Now, I will say, to be fair, the AP called me about this before the election, and they ran a story on it. Now, it wasn't as honest and unbiased as I would have liked, but they did run the story. And I can tell you, the reporter, um, he totally understood when I said, look, Zuckerberg is just juicing Democratic turnout in the demographics and locations that they needed. He didn't have the least doubt of that. What he was genuinely baffled by was why right-wing donors weren't doing it. He, He could simply not understand that. So, which parts of the equation in what they did was illegal? Well, here's the way that the IRS puts it. On the one hand, you can be a 501c3, that is, hey, the, the charities you think about, like the YMCA, your church, the women's shelter, the Boy Scouts, the ones you get the tax deductions for. Those are the ones required to be nonpartisan. And the IRS says it is permitted in principle for them to do voter registration um, and even help people get to the polls. But, and I'm quoting, um, that uh, they are not allowed to uh, have the effect of helping one uh, party or candidate. The effect of that. And if you go on our website, capitalresearch.org, you will see um, devastating statistics showing the extreme blue word tilt to all the uh, giving they did in Pennsylvania and in Georgia, and we'll have some more states up, you know, in the next week or two, several more big states like that that were, that were battlegrounds. Sure. I mean, like right here in Virginia, one of the things that we saw in the 7th District, which was a hotly contested congressional seat, in the conservative precincts where um, the vote would have been heavier, more Republican, they had an issue, and they weren't able to get the polling place open on time like they were supposed to, and they had to open late. A lot of people had to get out of line because they had to go to work. And in the Democrat-leaning parts of the uh, district, they kept the polling places open late because they had um, an issue with the machines. And so they gave those folks extra time to vote. The effect, obviously, being that the, the conservative vote was suppressed. Yep. Well, part of the part of this is our side is not, uh, you know, this is partly our fault. We have not appreciated that process is unbelievably important in elections. The left for decades at this point has been doing everything possible to twist the process to make cheating easier and to increase their turnout. Um, and uh, so you can be sure that for any election area in the country, if there's a problem, like you're saying, and sometimes those are even honest problems, right? I mean, the life is messy, something happens. Um, but their side is going to pounce, and it's going to get a judge to have an instant injunction saying you have to keep the polls open for four extra hours or whatever. And we're totally flat-footed. We're like, oh, gosh, I guess I have to go home now. And we don't have anybody there. Right. right. And we didn't even have poll watchers in critical precincts in 
swing states. And I know that because, I, like, one of the vote fraud groups that we w- worked alongside of, you know, they, he had some of his people in, like, critical Michigan precincts where he knew there was likely to be shenanigans. But there was nobody from the state party, the national party, or any of the candidates on the ballot. Because right. we're just clueless. Right. You know? No, we see this again and again. And, you know, so the, and the problem is, is that, and, and now you turn around and the folks are like, well, show us the evidence, show us the proof. Well, all of the rules and everything has been set up in such a way to make it impossible to show that because, for instance, they said, okay, you can do uh, mail-in ballots without a witness. Well, we can't show you the proof that it wasn't the person because you, you took out any of the safeguards. All the safeguards have been removed, right, um, yep. to make it – to streamline – the, the bad actors, to make it easy for the bad actors. Um, and so the, the first thing that any American, I don't care which side of the aisle you're on, that any American should want is election integrity, to make sure that your vote counts and that, that no one can change that, that your vote, every legal vote should count. Yep, well, the, the thing is, and people, people do know this, I mean, you know, that is a the talking heads on your TV set will not admit it. But, you know, something like pushing 20 percent of Democrats believe that this was a really dirty election and something like a third of independents do. So this is not some crude Republican only uh, notion. And, and by the way, you, in, in the over the years, polling, you, you often, for instance, uh, black folks will will be more likely to believe in that vote, bad vote fraud is happening. Because, of course, it's precisely in big cities that you have a lot of the dirtiest shenanigans and a lot of the just incompetence at, at running the elections in the first place. You know, it's part incompetence and part uh, corruption. Right, exactly. So thank you so much for, for, you know, bringing this to light and letting folks know about what's going on here. Does Capital Research Center concentrate on any one area or – what areas do you focus on? Uh, well, we we focus a lot on um, the the big donors on the other side, like uh, George Soros and the and Tom Steyer and the Ford Foundation. Um, we focus uh, a lot on the left's dark money because, of course, you know, just just yesterday, Sheldon Whitehouse, the Democratic senator from Rhode Island, was screaming about dark money being the cause of the riot. Uh, and, you know, they're always attacking dark money as if it's some Republican and right-wing thing when, in fact, as our research shows, there's as much or more dark money on their side of the aisle. Um, and then this year we're going to really be digging deep into all the ways that those non- supposedly nonpartisan nonprofits are intervening in elections. Right. Now, so for our listening audience who want to learn more about what you're doing, of course, it's capitalresearch.org. Um, and again, obviously you would use your website to get your information out. Do you have any publications as well? Yes, we have a, uh, we have a magazine that you can uh, sign up for at the website, and we have a, a weekly email as well. That It's not a begging email for money. It's a our greatest hits of the week research email. Um, so I encourage people to do that. Uh, we also have uh, accounts at you know, Parler and uh, Twitter and Facebook, at least at least the last I checked. Um, well, I don't know about Parler, um, I think right now they're... Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, they're down, yes. But uh, you, you, we're, all, we're also on that. There's, another, there's a second website I, I highly recommend. It's our pride and joy, influencewatch.org, influencewatch.org. It is an online encyclopedia of the left. The thousands of entries, the donors, the groups, the staffers, um, the movements like Black Lives Matter or Occupy Wall Street, um, reams and reams of information um, there, uh, done like wiki style. 